हेलो गाइस दूतम जॉय फ्रॉम डॉन्टलेस दूतम्स हियर वेलकम टू शर्लो होम्स चैप्टर वन पार्ट इलेवन वी आर प्लेइंग दिस गेम इन मास्टर ऑफ डिडक्शन डिफिकल्टी फॉलो अस इन फेसबुक एंड ट्विटर लिंक्स आर गिवन बिलो वी केम टू नो दैट मिस्टर मर्क्यूरियो वॉज मर्डर्ड एंड एज एन एविडेंस वी केम टू नो दैट सम रेफ्यूजी अफ्रीकन ओरिजिन गर्ल इज बिहाइंड द मर्डर मिस्ट्री वी विजिटेड द रेफ्यूजी कैंप एंड मेट मिस्टर हार्लो विथ He told us about a murder in refugee camp. In this part, we will begin our investigation by meeting Inspector Tewksbury for further clues. So without much delay, let's start investigation as Sherlock Holmes. Let's begin. So guys, time to meet with Inspector Tewksbury. So they keep these refugees under a bridge like proverbial trolls. No wonder the people outside are so disturbed. Are you getting Who the hell are you? Yes. How did you get in here? Mr. Ronald Harlow, let me in, sir. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a surveyor of refugee affairs with City Hall. You're Inspector Tewksbury, I presume. A surveyor. What does that even mean? In short, I've been sent to conduct an extensive report on the incident for the Colonial Office and to assess all the damage inflicted on state property. Got it. Another paper worm sent to count money and get food for archive mold. Go on, look around, but don't make yourself too at home. As if I didn't have enough problems before you appeared. Could you first tell me what happened here? What happened? People from the bridge above the camp heard a woman screaming and saw a mass of refugees attacking a man. Clearly not a refugee. When the camp guards came by, the man was floating in the sewage canal with a knife in his chest. Bam. A murder. Big news for Cordona. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. And none of the refugees were harmed? One fellow was cut. He's lying over there near their kitchen. He's in a bad way. You mentioned a woman screaming who attracted the bypassers on the bridge. Was she harmed? No, she's all right, but perhaps the whole debacle started because of her. She started wailing and the refugees stood up for the girl. And where is this young woman now? Back there in the shacks, same as the rest of the refugees. She's been questioned by my men, but she's just some refugee girl. Can't understand much English. Do you have any suspects yet? You're joking, right? I've got a whole camp full of suspects. And if you ask me, this bloke had it coming. Better bury him and forget about the whole thing. And now there's a crowd gathered at the camp, and my superiors say we must thoroughly interrogate the refugees, at least those who can understand any English. Do you believe that your superiors wish to get rid of the refugees? I think that both our superiors would rather keep the story quiet. Since that's an unaffordable luxury now, they're looking how to protect their public image. That's why I have to waste my time waiting for my people to turn every stone and befriend every refugee. Did you learn anything about the dead man? The fellow looks like a thug. I've had dozens like him fished out of the sea over the past 20 years. Ever since these refugees arrived, there have been people on Cordona with bad blood in them. My best bet is that this thug had something against them too. And no clue as to his identity. He had some items on his body, but nothing to indicate who he was or where he was from. I think I should catalogue his possessions in my records. Go on. They're on the table near the body. Okay, thank you, Inspector Tewksbury. Here we go again. Number of hours on Cordona before stumbling upon another dead body. Zero. Clearly a left handprint here. Okay, so let's see any update. The the intruder's body was lying in the sewage canal before the police dragged it out. The man had been stabbed in the chest, a bloody handprint. On a stone near the bridge suggest that the man that the man tried to grab hold of it while falling into the canal 
So the inspector allowed me to look at the body and its positions and come up with my own version of what happened. Okay. Police boots. Always happy to trample evidence. <laughs> yep. A heavy boot with a worn-out sole. A man's footprint. These events have fractured into so many pieces. But I know you can collect them all, Sherlock. A furrow in the ground. A blood trail leading to or from the canal. Malpal, soaked with salt water. Uh huh. One thousand pounds. A fair sum, especially considering British currency isn't very common in Cordona. A simple leather sheath. Perfect for a dirk. Dust under the nails. I don't see much coal around here. A steel dirk, sharp. A common accessory among sailors and soldiers. I'd say the blade penetrated upward, however, the wound is too messy to be certain. An interesting tattoo. Does it mean something? <laughs> Heavy boots with one sole far more worn than the other. This man was limping, John. A violent death. But this man, limping. Coal dust. I think we're on to something here, John. Okay. Let us go through updates. The man found dead inside the refugee camp has a distinctive tattoo on his neck two lines one over another with a point at the top okay a series of footprints of different sizes covers the campground one of the footprints indicates a sworn indicates a worn out soul okay what about mind palace The thug also visited Vogel's gallery. The dead man from the refugee camp was the same person who had broken into Vogel's gallery. Okay. May I ask for your assistance? Nothing I can tell you, sir, but others might know more. Oh, 
Well, carnelian agate beads, a traditional African adornment. The cut is deep, potentially serious if not treated immediately. Okay. He is in shock, feverish and dehydrated. Sherry, you know first aid. Surely you have a duty to help this man. You can't leave him to certain death. Wounded refugee. So wounded refugee. There is a wounded refugee in the camp. He looks in a bad way. The cut on his chest is deep and bleeding. He is feverish and dehydrated. The man will certainly die of infection if his wound is not treated. Let's see what I can find in the camp. I must concentrate on finding something to clean the wound, something to disinfect it, something to disinfect it, something to use as a bandage. Okay. No hint of blood or impact. It might have been used as an improvised weapon. The blood sprayed off the blade after the strike. Someone was dragged against their will. A straight blood splash on the ground looks as if it was sprayed down from a blade. A stick beside it may be an improvised blunt weapon. From the shacks on the far side of the camp, there are evident tracks on the ground, as if someone had been dragged forcefully. Someone bled profusely here. A fresh crack, as if the crate was hit recently. You know what? I'd like to understand. What? How did our dead man end up inside the camp in the first place? If they find out about the passage, everything will go to hell. If they find out about the pa So what's going on at the refugee camp? Police officers are worried that the situation with the dead body will put the camp into strict lockdown and they will lose the money flow they were earning from their... Okay. Nobody will know anything if you keep your bloody mouth shut. The coppers smell fishy here, Sherry. Perhaps we should sniff around in the camp a little more thoroughly. You are right, John. 
Sherry, just look at this. Living quarters in a sewer. What kind of a genius bureaucrat came up with this idea? Mmm. You still here? The guards at the sewers were speaking about taking refugees out of the camp. Do you know anything about this, Inspector? Less than you do, obviously. And this doesn't bother you as an officer of the law? I can neither punish them nor put them on the right track, if that's what you're asking. Maybe your friends at City Hall could do something about it, but I seriously doubt that. To be honest, I'm sick and tired of being frowned on for my uniform. If those fine gentlemen you've eavesdropped on are in some shady business, that's on their heads. So Inspector Tewksbury says he has heard nothing about any shady dealings in the camp, obviously. But he doesn't seem surprised about his colleagues being involved in such an operation. Why would he surprise? Because he, he is also behind everything, every shady deals. It's unlikely anyone could get in or out of the camp by water without alerting the police guards. Sealed shut. I doubt our man could get through these grates. No, it's too short for these walls or cliffs. I don't think so by ladder. Malpal. A single Malpal butt. Roadman cigarettes. A brand highly regarded by law enforcement officers. So there wasn't any sophisticated infiltration plan. The good old police just let the man into the camp. Now we have everything we need to get the full picture of what happened at the camp.
So, we have a thug who came to take a refugee woman with him. She resisted, but he dragged her by force. One of the refugees stood in his way, armed with a stick, yet he could do nothing against a cutthroat with a blade. The man didn't anticipate that the other refugees would intervene and stand against him. In the confusion, the woman managed to break free. The thug took fright and fled. He was stopped by the falling crates. He stumbled and fell, piercing his chest with his own blade. However, the wound didn't cause instant death. He managed to stand, but still bleeding, he lost his balance on the bridge and fell. Before all of this, the man had freely entered the camp through the main entrance. The police admitted him after they had a short smoke together. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. <laughs> In our man's case, it's the same sword. Yep. The thug wanted to kidnap the girl. The thug came to the camp intending to kidnap a woman. He had the opportunity to kill her, but that wasn't his goal. A henchman, not merely a thief. He is not a merely a thief, but also a kidnapper. A henchman who takes on various roles. Okay. You still here? Inspector, I believe I can aid your investigation. I know who the dead man is and what really happened to him. You do? Well, good for you. But I'm afraid I'm not the one you need to share your findings with. Speak to Mr. Harlow here. He's the one responsible for settling things in the camp. You don't even care to listen? Oh, I do care. Maybe even more than I need to. But I'm only here today to lock the place up, question witnesses, and file the facts. It's sad, but coming up with conclusions is not among my tasks here. You fellows at City Hall do that. Anyway, speak to the supervisor. I'll just stand by and listen to what you have to say. Let's talk with him. Mr. Harlow, your refugees didn't murder anyone. What? Pray tell me what you've learned. All right, listen carefully. This might solve one problem for you, but will create a few more. Oh, well, that's a great start. The man came to the camp intending to kidnap one of your refugees, a woman. What he didn't expect was that the refugees would stand up to protect the woman. A brawl had broken out. In the chaos of it, the man stumbled over those crates and fell on his own blade. How do you know he fell on his own blade? The wound in his chest was inflicted from an unusual angle. It was not an offensive stab, shall we say. The refugees didn't touch him. And judging by the blood at the scene, the intruder managed to raise himself but was unable to walk very far. He ultimately fell into the canal. But how did he sneak into the camp? Why didn't the police see him? And this is where your new problems emerge, Mr. Harlow. What do you mean? You're not a dull-witted man. You know what I mean. There is no feasible way to get into the camp without the police guards knowing of it. <sighs> the pile of mess I had to sort out has just become bigger, but somehow that doesn't surprise me. Anyway, I thank you for your help, Mr. Holmes. I'll take it from here. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the police aren't detaining the refugees any longer. You can go back in and look for your witness. You think one small clerk can make any difference in this place? Who knows, John? Just one ill-fitting cog could make the whole machine crumble. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Harlow. You're the one who made the police leave us alone. I proved to them that your people didn't kill that man. What's in it for you? You need something from us. Yes, I do. I need to speak with the girl drawn here. Mm. The dead man came for her too. He wanted to take the girl away, but we won't allow her to be hot again. What do you want from Nayla? Nayla. She was hurt some time ago. I'm here to find the people who did this and bring them to justice. And to find them, I need Nayla's help. Will you let me speak to her? Justice. There's no justice on this land. But you helped us, so maybe your words are not empty. 
You can speak to Nela, if she wants it. But I will be watching you. Hello, Nela. <laughs> My name is Sherlock. I know someone hurt you. I am here to help. I'm trying to find the people involved and bring them to justice, please. There is a photograph, and I'm sorry, it is terrible, but I simply must ask. Where did this happen? What can you tell me about these people? Christ, Sherlock. <laughs> Nayla, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not very good at this. You come here for me, but you are rude and cruel and condescending. A cross. The man had this cross. Now go away. Leave us be. I do not need another white man's help. Oh, glad that wasn't me. Not my best work, John. By a long shot. Naylor doesn't want his meddling. I'm starting to wonder what this all achieves. But she helped you anyway. Now we know that maniac's face and the cross he wore, we can still catch him. Okay. This man did not come here by chance. He is a very important thread in this case. And this tattoo might help me to pull it. Okay. The defiler is a high-ranking official. Badges such as these are usually awarded to high-ranking officials. The defiler from the photograph might be one. Have you found anything helpful? Not yet, ma'am. So Thomas Norton profile, Thomas Norton born 1840 in London, graduated from the University of Oxford in 1864. Oh, in 1869 started working at the home office as a secretary. In 1875 took a position as a military commissioner in India. Okay, honored, honored by the queen herself with the order of the bath in 1877 first march 1878 was appointed as the british envoy in cordona with his own cabinet in the city hall okay see again British envoy okay yes that's the British envoy Thomas Norton hello sir good to see you if you're here on matters of signing up for military service come back tomorrow our department needs to straighten out some business Red eyes didn't sleep last night, of course. Facial hair, no time to shave. Why? Yeah, that's the badge. 
Order of the Bath, well owned, never removed. Rumpled cloths, stays at work late. Red stain, wine. The order of the bath looks quite worn. The man is proud of it and never takes it off. The red stain on his wrist indicates that he has recently drank wine. His clothes are wrinkled. He barely bothers to shave and his red eyes indicate that he may suffer from insomnia or deep anxiety. It looks as if he lives within a nightmare, attempting to rid himself of his terrible memories of past mistake. And why is a party goer? He's in remorse. Yes, he's in remorse. Why are you staring at me like I'm a Madame Tussauds figure? <laughs> Didn't you hear what I just said? You blame yourself for what you did. It won't be any good unless you confess to me, so I'll try to be polite. What sort of did are we talking about? Are you from the press? I'm here because of Naylor. Who? You don't remember her name. Lad, if you won't tell me where you came, I'll call for someone here to sort you out, if you get my meaning. Do you recognize this man? Hmm. We definitely look alike. But you have the wrong person. Really? Then you won't mind if I pass this along to the newspaper? All right. All right. Is this about money, as you said in the letter? What kind of sum are we talking about? I've never written a single word to you. Bribery, not my style. So, that letter, it wasn't from you? Well, it appears that more and more people in the city are finding out about your despicable hobby, doesn't it? You're in the clutches of justice, and very soon they will squeeze you. It's in your best interest to cooperate. Fine. I suppose now we have a nice long talk. Do you drink, Mr...? Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> and I do not. Shame. All the best discussions are accompanied by a glass of whiskey. But out of respect for you, I won't drink either. Respect? <laughs> That's an unusual word in your mouth, Mr... Where are my manners? My name is Thomas Norton, a British envoy in Cordona on a military mission. So, where do we start? Boniface Mercurio, does the name mean anything to you? He's an artist, right? The one responsible for the painting that compromises you. I found him dead in his room. Oh, that is bad. Wait, you don't think that I have anything to do with this? You had motive to kill him. Maybe I did, but listen. I know how this looks, but murder? That's on another level. I had thoughts that this Mercutio... Mercurio. <laughs> well, him, yes. I thought he could have been the blackmailer. But I was too afraid to make any hasty decisions. There were plenty of ways to fail by making a move, so I chose to wait. To see what he would do next. You have to believe me. I don't believe people. I believe evidence. Then look at the evidence. The painting that depicted you in the image of the devil was stolen by a mercenary. Did you have anything to do with it? I might be a rotten person, sir, but hiring criminals for illicit purposes is not in my daily schedule. And buying the painting in an attempt to hide the crime, is that on your daily schedule? What would you do in my situation? I would never put myself in such a situation. <laughs> You're young. I could never have imagined myself in my current position, yet here I am in front of you. We all make mistakes, Mr. Holmes, and I'm no exception. So, let's return to the beginning. What happened at the party? I vaguely remember that night. As usual at such parties, you meet people, you talk with them, they invite you to spend some time alone with them. What can I say? I got myself mixed up with the wrong company, and somebody must have mixed some psychoactive substance in my drink. After that, it's all blurry. I completely lost my sanity. I made a terrible mistake which I regret deeply. You don't say? Do refugee girls often appear on the menu at those types of parties? It's rather rare. 
So you didn't attend the party to engage in an exotic experience involving a vulnerable woman unable to accuse you of assault? I would never have planned such a terrible thing. What happened was just... bad circumstance. Hmm. You mentioned blackmail. Tell me about it. All right. A couple of days ago, I received an anonymous letter. It said that in the art gallery at Caravansary, there exists a painting that incriminates me. The blackmailer made it clear that if there is a painting, then a photograph exists too. And I should be wary of what it might do to my reputation. What does the blackmailer want from you? Money, of course. What else do such people want? Needless to say, I don't remember anyone taking photographs at the party. Up until the last moment, I hoped he was bluffing. But he wasn't, as you've just proven to me. Show me the letter. I burnt it as soon as I read it. I've left enough evidence. There's no need for any more. Mr. Holmes, I've built my entire career on hard work and uncompromising dedication to the Crown. I made a mistake, but I'm not a villain from some cheap adventure fiction. By putting me behind bars, you will benefit precisely no one. Rotting in prison is the least you deserve, but I have a better idea. You will make amends and help the ones you hurt. Yep. Help, Nila. Nila deserves the very utmost of what you can do. Help the girl? I can't risk the press paying extra attention to her. I will do anything except that. That's not all. I see. Use your connections to help patriate the refugees, find them decent homes, give them jobs. There must be a meaning to your position and my decision. Yes, all right, I can do that. So, will you give me the photograph now? I need to think this all through. Don't do anything foolish in the meantime. What makes you think you can decide what's best for these people? Such is the arrogance of British imperialism. I take your point. Okay, case book. Let's see. So, character portrait. The British envoy. The order of the bath looks quite worn and the man is proud of it and never takes it off. The red stain on his wrist indicates that he has recently drank wine. His clothes are wrinkled. He barely bothers to shave and his red eyes indicate that he may suffer from insomnia or deep anxiety. It looks as if he lives within a nightmare attempting to rid himself of his terrible memories of past mistakes. Okay. So envoy testimony. The envoy said he was at the party but was drugged so he barely remembers the event. He received a letter from an anonymous person who blackmailed the envoy extorting money in exchange for the photograph. The envoy also claims that he didn't hire the thief nor he is responsible for Mercurio's death but he tried to buy the painting because he was afraid of losing his social position. He claims himself guilty but proposes a deal if i bring him the photograph he will help the refugees okay the envoy wants to hide the proof the envoy's interest in the photograph is pragmatic if he obtains it nothing will threaten his reputation System sufferers. All refugees are victims of the system. The situation they are in must and can be mended. Okay, so the conclusion. Okay. The envoy wants to secure his reputation. The British envoy violated Nila, the refugee during the party. Were the photograph of the crime to be released, it would ruin his career or perhaps I could use that leverage to help the refugee camp. Merciless justice, the envoy can be neither trusted nor forgiven for what he did, humiliation and ostracization from an outraged Cordona are the least he deserves. Give the photograph to Vogel so he can make everything public. 
smaller evil for the greater good thomas norton is a debaucher who has committed a terrible act even though he deserves to be brought to justice i cannot overlook the opportunity to do greater good give the envoy the photograph in exchange for the refugees legalization okay so we have two choices first we can give the photograph to vogel so he can make everything public and the second one is just give the photograph to this envoy thomas norton in exchange of the refugees legalization both are tough choices very tough choices let's see smaller evil for the greater good Have you thought it all through? Yes, almost. The refugees, what will happen to them? Well, I wouldn't be standing here in this fancy office if I didn't know how to pull the right strings. In fact, it's the only thing I know. The local governor will receive a decree signed by the House of Lords containing a request to patriate the refugees in the name of the crown. From where did you gain such influence? I never asked you how you found the photograph. So don't ask the magician. how he performs his tricks but how can i believe you Ugh, i presume you do believe in my selfishness the initiator of the refugee salvation will be none other than the british envoy savior and protector of those in need it's a win situation for me too now what about the photograph you deserve to be punished but the greater good is what matters here i won't bargain it for justice for nail I'm glad that this situation is over. It will be over when you settle the matter of the refugees. You have my word, Mr. Holmes. Let's see. Mr. Holmes, you've returned. Have you uncovered anything new about the theft? I've brought news, but not all of it will please you. Fill me in, Mr. Holmes. I won't shoot the messenger. Uh Let's see. I located the thief, but found him rather cold. He was tight-lipped about the painting too. Ha, huh, he's dead. How very droll, Mr. Holmes. Or I presume you were not responsible. It was an accident at the refugee camp. He impaled himself on his own knife. Life is nothing if not cruel and capricious. I tracked down Boniface Mercurio. I presume he wasn't delighted about the situation. He was not having a good day on account of his murder, killed in his own flat by the same person that stole his painting. Oh, sweet Mercurio, perishing in the pursuit of his art. How apt I will miss his exceptional sense of humor. What about the stolen painting? Have you located it? Unfortunately, I could not locate the missing painting. Oh, Mr. Holmes, such disappointing news. Not even a shred of information, the slightest lead. I'm afraid the case has gone cold. Uh, I suppose if you were unable to find it, no one else could. What a pity. Oh, but I can tell. You learned something else, didn't you? What happened to your crusade of truth? Was it not that important after all? No truth will satisfy you, Mr. Vogel. It was not an attack, Mr. Holmes. If you've chosen not to tell me, I respect your intention. But it is just rather boring, isn't it? It is what it is. Well, now that we've resolved all of our outstanding matters, I have a gift for you. I took the liberty of having it delivered to Stonewood Manor. I am told it belonged to your mother. What is it? And what exactly have you sent me? Frankly I'm not sure how to answer that. I trust you'll know. Previously you mentioned there may have been more to my mother's passing than consumption. It appears you were right. Oh dear. I'd hoped to be wrong. She was 
Unstable, mentally unwell. She required sustained specialized treatment, but her madness persisted. I knew that Violet had disappeared from the public eye, but had no idea of her suffering. I cannot imagine what you're feeling. I'm fine. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. I am curious to see what you have procured. So we have comple completed the quest, the muse from abroad. So let me see. So now a package from Vogel. Werner Vogel mentioned that he has a gift for me, something that once belonged to my family. It was delivered to the front door of my manor. So we need to go to Stonewood Manor. I see. And we will do this in the next part, guys. That's all from 11th part of Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. In this channel, you will watch and enjoy latest games walkthrough in the hardest difficulty available part by part till the end. We need your support, guys. Please do like, subscribe and share the video. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We would love to hear from you guys and wholeheartedly appreciate your valuable feedback. Dutam Joy from Dauntless Dutams signing out. See you in the next part. Till then, take care and stay alert like Sherlock.